Tesla stock has been popping lately, going up quite a bit. Has a few days here and there pulling back, going up some more. It is very exciting, but is it the best investment out there? There are a lot of gurus who think they know the next big thing and they're happy to share it, but most of them are not a lot of people. It's one clown writing the same article over and over and posting it a hundred times in a hundred places, and they're terrible. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> I've got uh speaking of terrible no I don't mean that Randy no it's not like that it's not like that you'll see uh we are gonna have a little chat about uh about that you know there is uh I don't know if you've ever been uh, a fool but these guys have Motley Fool uh, this, this one went out on Yahoo predictions three stocks that'll be worth more than Tesla in 10 years Ooh, this is exciting <laughs> it's exciting I have a uh, a friend who's a viewer on the channel who said, you know, I actually make good money. I joined the, the Motley Fool, you know, seminars, the, the live right. in-person ones. And each year there was a group of us, uh, that would, that made a bunch of money. And I'm like, did that group get smaller and smaller each year while the people who were losing money fell away? Because that's when I worked at the bank, we were instructed that that is called a scam. But what they do is they just give you a bunch of ideas and then put you in charge. And when you succeed, it's because of them. And when you fail, it's because of you. Yeah. So let's get ready to get surprised. What are, what are the three? Well, let's get excited. Berkshire Hathaway. Hmm. Okay. It's already neck and neck with Tesla at about yeah. a trillion. Right. Berkshire Hathaway has a mountain of cash. Uh, they will deploy it. But uh, the 325 billion cash stockpile, uh, I think it's actually higher than that. I think so. But I think it's like 700 or it, it's an outrageous amount. But the question is, how will they deploy it? Does Warren Buffett still have the magic? And is that magic comparable to what we're going to see from autonomy and robotics? Your thoughts on your <laughs> thoughts on Berkshire Hathaway? Well, first of all, Berkshire Hathaway is iconic. Iconic. Um, and, you know, there's nothing there's nothing quite like it. Um, people have commonly wondered how come they've never invested in Tesla. They could have done extremely well, but it's not their cup of tea. Now, it might be their cup of tea after the robotics have started. So after we have an Optimus out there, we have a Robotaxi out there and there's a stream of, of income and throwing off massive amounts of free cash flow. All of a sudden, it might be a Berkshire type of company. Um, and uh, then, you know, maybe they would invest in Tesla and maybe they would go along for the rest of the ride. I, <laughs> I imagine that the ride for Tesla, uh, even if everybody gets it next year or they get it in 2026, if the street gets it and the retail customers get it, everybody gets it, there's still going to be quite a continuing increase in stock valuation out years from now. So, so Berkshire could, could get in there uh, like they did with Apple, uh, you know, or Bank of America and just go for part of the ride. When they say they're, they've said repeatedly, yeah, uh, Tesla's not our kind of company. Guys, you invested in BYD. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. Uh, let's take a look at the next one on the list, Broadcom. Now, for those who don't know what Broadcom is, uh, they are a multinational designer, developer, manufacturer, and global supplier of a wide range of semiconductor and infrastructure software products. Basically, they offer data center networking software, broadband wireless. They're the ones uh, making a lot of money on the data centers today. Is that going to is that going to make them more valuable than Tesla? I haven't uh, dug into uh, Broadcom in terms of a possible investment because I, I rarely do. Um, I spend so much time trying to understand Tesla and I'm 90 uh, in my stock portfolio. It's 99% Tesla and 1% ARKK. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the whole mm -hmm. list. <laughs> so, um, so but uh -huh. I, but when it comes to yep. Broadcom, I've certainly seen the headlines. I've certainly, you know, know a little bit in terms of where they're going and they're, seem to be a fine company. Uh, I think they'll do very, very well in the future, and they'll probably get a huge advantage from all of these uh, data centers they're going in. But in terms of comparing that to the TAM on, let's say, all labor, 
<laughs> all driving? All driving. All transportation? <laughs> How about Come all on. energy storage? <laughs> I'll tell you my concern for Broadcom is uh, that they have, what they're doing are things that companies are already trying to bring in-house because it's expensive. I don't believe Tesla used Broadcom when they installed uh, Cortex. I don't think X A uh, X A I used Broadcom when they put in their data center. I don't think Broadcom could have delivered on the timeline needed, even if it was a, you know, a, a Manhattan project level event. So I think that uh, what they are doing will be a, a, a diminishing market. They will get a smaller share of the market as more companies choose to do it in house. But who knows? Who knows? The third one, are you ready? Because okay. I'm excited, okay. obviously. Eli Lilly, oh. drug maker, could be worth more than uh, than Tesla in 10 years. Well, the, now, Eli Lilly, that probably should have been the first one. Maybe they maybe they got, got it in reverse order. Eli Lilly is... I listened to their CEO. I spent, I think, three or four hours listening to an interview with him a few weeks ago. Um, that company is poised. I think it should be one of the Magnificent Eight. I think they should you know, uh, spread it out. I've already said this several times on my channel. I think it, they should change it to Mag Eight, add Eli Lilly. Um, uh, the, their drug, uh, their, their weight loss, uh, side of what they're doing right now is going to be expanding into pill form, um, as well as the uh, shots that you put in your leg, the overall TAM on diet pills that work might be higher than the overall labor business. <laughs> and we don't know, <laughs> but you know, it's close. <laughs> well, I assume the. $800 a month or 1000 a month that they're charging now is unsustainable if they wish to grow their market share. Yes, a lot of people yes, yes. don't have that kind of money. And, and they don't, but, and according to the CEO, they don't want to charge $1,000 a month. But, you know, mm -hmm. that's why they're, they're, they've got all these other, they've got, I think, seven or eight different variations of the weight loss project, product, you know, that are in in the, what do you would call it, in line, you know, pipeline being approved one, in the pipeline being approved. Yeah. Like that. So they, uh, they, they really want to go to the masses. They want to be able to produce this in a way that would be something that's available to everybody. The other thing that Eli Lilly has going for them is that they uh, presumably have other lines of pharmaceuticals in the pipeline as well. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, as a reminder, this, this, this article, this very foolish Motley Fool article is from November 17th. So let's try a different article uh, from a different time. This is a Motley Fool one from the 16th, one day earlier. Prediction, these two stocks could be worth more than Tesla in the next five years. And of course, we're going to see uh, some repeats here, obviously, because we just saw three. Right. Uh, the first one is, of course, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Oh, okay. Taiwan Semiconductor. <sighs> Okay, but yeah. why didn't this make the other list one day later? Yeah. And the second one that they put on here is again, I think Berkshire Hathaway. Oh, Berkshire again. Oh no, Broadcom is the second. Oh, Broadcom one. again. Okay, okay. Okay, so very. So, so TMC, that's interesting that they put it then that they that they made that statement at that point because they wouldn't have known that what I consider to be maybe. The legacy of the Biden administration just happened Friday, Saturday. Um, mm. They made a deal. Biden administration made a deal with TMC. They're going to put in two additional fabs in the United States. They got one that's almost finished, and they got two more that they're going to build. Um, and while I don't think that'll bring them even close to the to the size of a Tesla uh, five years from now. Um, it might make, it might bring them close to the size of Tesla now. Chips aren't going out of style and uh, Taiwan Semiconductor does them exceptionally well. The new fabs going in in the U.S. that we just read about are both 1.6 and 2 nanometer uh, architectures, as I understand, which is the cutting edge. So that means that uh, maybe Motley Fool knows what they're talking about, uh, right? Uh, clearly, uh, surely I'm not about to show something comical that upends that notion. <sighs> Will Lucid be worth more than Tesla by 2040? <laughs> and this is from Halloween, making it the spookiest of the stories uh, that I'll yes, be sharing. Yes. It is uh, very dumb. 
I, I'm not going to even walk you through it. It's yeah. just terrible. Yeah. Oh, come on. What are you doing? Uh, but uh, I guess we could look at it a little bit. Lucid the Saudi, with the Saudi royal family was to just, um, you know, turn over their their loot, you know, their jewels and their and their their mountain of cash uh, to Lucid. It might be one of the most, you know, valuable companies in the world. This article says, well, if you look at what they're doing, um, you know, uh, <laughs> if Lucid successfully ramps its production, analysts expect its revenue to more than quadruple from 800 million to 3.3 billion in 2026. They also expect it to narrow its losses from 3 billion to 1.9 billion. So that's not good. This would make it comparable to Tesla in 2014. True or false? <laughs> well, it'd make it comparable in sales, but not in not in losses. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Exactly. It's it's absurd. And what they showed a little bit earlier was that um yeah, they are losing uh, four, you know, three and a half times as much as they're bringing in. Yeah. But uh, clearly that's a good sign. And what's really fun is at the bottom of this, Motley Fool stock advisor analysts just identified what they believe are the 10 best stocks. Mm. Do you want to see it? Mm. Me either, because it's behind a paywall. Oh, yes, of course. And uh, are you insane? to? Th I've seen your first three, four, five picks. I'm out. <laughs> I am out. But we can do... Uh, this other one, now I pulled up this one. This is another Motley Fool. Yes. Sensational stocks. This is from May. So clearly, uh, the first thing they do is, of course, list the MAG-7. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, all of these are going to be bigger. They already are today. So you've already won. Now, whether they stay bigger is another matter. And then it goes into, I mean, it's just stuffing in the keywords. But they, uh, they said MasterCard. MasterCard is the one that's oh. uh, on here. It's like, mm, is it? I, uh, I don't know, man. I, I think that's a little silly. Johnson and Johnson. Okay. I get it. I get it. Um, again, with pharmaceuticals, they are all shooting for the moon all the time. Right. Somebody's going to make it. Chevron. Really? You think Chevron's got a good tenure? I mean, look at how flat it's been. At, well, I guess that's the share price, but it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Hard to, so, hard to know about the energy companies because they do have a ton of money and they do have a ton of tech. Um, and so if they were, and they are pretty much across the board, all of them are looking at and ex not only exploring, but buying into some kinds of clean, uh, you know, energy of, of types. Um, so depending on what Chevron's plans are along that line, you know, I think that the, I think energy, I think that gasoline and oil, I've said this a hundred times, and I think Elon agrees a hundred percent, is that gasoline and oil will be needed at as at record numbers above the numbers now, probably for another five to 10 years. We don't really know when it'll stop because we don't know what the next tech like these data centers, uh, you know, they'll come along that'll require massive amounts of energy. But there's going to be peak oil at some point, and maybe that's 2030, maybe it's 2035, but there's going to be peak oil, and these guys know it, um, and so they are diversifying pretty much all of them. I think the what's the what's the one in uh, England? Uh, uh, Shell? No, the big the, the big the uh, oh, well, British Petroleum I think is no longer in BP. Uh, BP is BP. yeah. BP is, uh, I don't know if they're still in England, but yes. Yes, but BP BP probably has done the most in terms of diversification. They've done a ton of stuff that they're, that they're working on, yeah. Shell has also gotten into uh, vehicle charging mm -hmm. uh, with a, a number of different initiatives, some of them citywide in small cities. So just for fun, I went ahead and <laughs> looked at, I just went to Google News and searched up stocks better than Tesla and found this one by Motley Fool. This Yahoo Voices, which is from Motley Fool. Uh, let's see, these two, Yahoo Voices, that's uh, Motley Fool again. All of them are Motley. This, I mean, they're all this repeats of right. the same right. one over and over. Yes. It is the same pack of clowns. Uh, interestingly, and I wanted to share this because this speaks to the health of some of the biggest companies out there. This is uh, Alexandra Mertz, Tesla Boomer Mama, mm. posted the updated relative financial strength table for Q3. And uh, she says Tesla has the second highest Altman Z score. Now, an Altman Z score measures um, 
all these different factors uh, that the ratings agencies kind of don't like to admit exists. Highest Altman Z score is NVIDIA. I apologize to viewers at home if this is too small, but it's 82.1 is the Altman Z score, which is fabulous. Mm -hmm. And it's because they have so little debt yeah. and so much revenue. But if you look at Tesla, they are second best uh, for the Altman Z score. They have very little debt. They have substantial income and yet have a rating of third to last out of all the companies here. They have the third to lowest rating because the ratings agencies are truly, truly awful. Yes. Thoughts on that? So Tesla Boomer Mama has been on this rant for as long as I can remember. It, in fact, made her famous last year with regard to this S&P nonsense. And, uh, and it's also the other rating agency, uh, Moody's. Moody's. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the, the, it's just crazy how they failed to upgrade uh, Tesla. Um, I, I will admit that before Tesla Boomer Mama, this would not have been on my radar. I wouldn't have been paying any attention to it at all. But it's very interesting to know now that these rating companies, I mean, think about your own credit score. You know, would you be happy if they were manipulating your credit score in order to do damage to your company or at least have the appearance of doing that? No, it's infuriating. So the way it was explained to me is that there are all these rating agencies have two customers. The one customer is the people who wish to uh, borrow money. And the other customer is the people who wish to invest the money. And Tesla doesn't need to borrow money. So they will not hire Moody's or S&P to rate them. And because they're not looking to raise money, none of the other people will pay them to rate Tesla. So, but they still publish whatever their last one was. Now, uh, it was Moody's who upgraded them to BAA3, I believe. And that is the lowest level of non junk rating. It puts them one tiny step above junk. And I see a tremendous conflict of interest when the borrower and the lender are both the customer. That is a, a very ugly situation to be in. The borrower should never be paying for their rating. Uh, that is mental. Uh, but you know, Hey, when you got a good racket going, if you can charge on both sides, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. Guys, uh, guys, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Head over to Randy Kirk's channel. See what he is up to. Um, normally I like to have experts on, so maybe I should get like, uh, someone who's written a couple best-selling books about Elon, like the Elon Musk method and, uh, the Elon Musk madness, which is forthcoming. I'm sure it'll just be a pamphlet because who's got time for that? Uh, everybody else, you know, like subscribe, do what you do, leave your comments into them comments down below. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.